Welcome to the Hangry Games Arena, where Kelly Brewster, the author of What's Eating You and host of the Hangry Games, is shaking up the weight loss world. She's providing you with tons of resources and helpful tips to obtain your long-term wellness and weight loss goals once and for all. The Hangry Games is recorded and produced at Open Space Studios. Hello, 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 my Hangry Game Nation. It's good to be back with you today in the studio. We are one episode shy of our 20th Hangry Game podcast. I have been, I, it's crazy. I know. I didn't realize just how much I would love spending time just talking about um, just weight loss and wellness topics, um, having guests along for the ride. Um, you know, just speaking of which, um, we are looking forward. We have a few guest speakers on the docket very soon. Um, I think it's going to be very awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are as well. Um, and it's just going to be an incredible opportunity. So I am excited about it. Um, I can't wait to share it with you. Um, but it's good to be back. Um, so today, um, I, and well, getting before we start about today, I do want to tell you, I hope you worked on your takeaways from last week. And you've been working through your prep steps to becoming more proactive in your wellness and your weight loss journey. If you're not sure, you just picked up, maybe this is your first podcast. I don't know. But if you aren't sure what these steps are, make sure to visit prepforit.com to check out our workbook and the What's Eating You book um, to learn a little bit more about these steps and how they can actually really help you to achieve long-term uh, success in this journey. We are all about trying to equip you and giving you as many things as we can to be successful. It's time to take all those dark, dusky secrets out of the dark and get them in the open and hit them head on. We've all done it. We hate to admit it, but we've all strayed a bit. What? That's right. We've all had a lapse in our willpower and judgment, and we've plunged head first into a mile high pie or maybe a big bag of Doritos or yes, even a box of ding dongs. Y'all know I'm going to get that in there all the time. <laughs> when I think about the dreaded cheat meals and yes, you guys on audio right now, I did just do air quotes. Okay. I can't help but think about the friends episode. I can always relate something back to friends episode. I mean, I grew up with it. So Anything and everything, I immediately, there's an episode that comes into my brain. I'm like, oh, blah, 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 you know, and it's, it just, to me, it's funny, but obviously if you're in a generational gap as I am at my workplace, then, then some are kind of looking at you like, oh yeah, really? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, but there was a particular friends episode where Ross and Rachel were on a break. And yes, I did the air quotes again. And Rachel was going over how her mother didn't think that they could patch things up. And she quoted her mother saying, once a cheater, always a cheater. And so yes, every time I hear that word, my mind does for a millisecond, it goes back to that episode. But more than than that iconic sitcom, the word cheat immediately makes me think of what happens when someone has a lapse in judgment, or willpower on their wellness and weight loss journey, or with anything else for that matter, right? The fact of the matter is today, I would like to change our mindsets, the paradigm per se of why we call it a cheat meal and changing the focus to a treat meal instead. Cheat implies just that. Cheat implies doing something that is not right, maybe deceptive for, yes, a personal gain. In weight loss, cheat meals can be the catalyst by which all future bad choices are potentially hinged, right? So we want to fix that. We want to change that. We all know that food in and of itself is one of life's great pleasures. Yes, it does sustain us, but it unfortunately does mean so much more. Now, for my emotional eaters out there, this can be a very slippery slope that I want to help you navigate through. So, so many people, we may cut back on calories, we cut back on our carb intake, maybe there's certain types of foods that we eat, um, you know, ensuring that we can achieve this overall wellness and weight loss. But most will eventually find themselves visiting with the dreaded cheat meals. To me, and of course, this is just me, that word implies so much more when we say it. It implies that we are doing something wrong. And that for my emotional eaters could trigger that emotional monster to toy with your brain and of course your stomach just a little bit, right? 
It does open up the opportunity to sway from your plan, sometimes far enough that we have trouble navigating our way back to reality and clean eating. And I really, look, I, I get it. Okay, remember, I was an emotional eater. You know, my, you know my testimony, you know my backstory there. And so I understand it. When you're following a very, a certain type of restrictive diet, it is normal, okay? It is very normal to feel moments of deprivation, cravings, and even a true feeling of being hangry. That's right, air quotes again. (laughs) This is all triggered when you know there are certain foods that are kind of off limits, you know? Let's face it, you do keto, you crave cake. You do intermittent fasting, you feel like you haven't eaten a meal in weeks and you're like four hours into the fasting portion of the, the eating plan, you know? Any eating plan that limits a certain food group can certainly trigger desire for those foods. So it's not uncommon, right? especially in the first few days or even weeks of following the eating plan. The problem is at some point in a weakened state, we can end up cheating on our eating plan, which as I mentioned previously, this just opens the threshold for the potential of long-term failure in our eating plan. So here's the deal. I propose a change. That's right. I am sick and tired of calling it something that makes us feel bad that has the potential to trigger a negative emotion and let that sucker, the emotional monster, out of his cage for a little fun. For this, From this point on, okay, we're calling the occasional diversion in our eating plan a treat meal. Yes, no longer will we be susceptible to the negative repercussions of an occasional variation to our current eating plan, but we are going to need to understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, and take the time to enjoy the moment. That's right, I said it. Now, who's in this with me? I know I'm hearing y'all. Y'all are all, yes, I knew, good. I love this one. I love this episode. (laughs) That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So to change the mindset of a cheat meal to a treat meal, we do need to talk about a few ways that we can address the scenic route, right, in our weight loss journey to avoid a major breakdown along the way. So we're going to look at seven ways that we can change on our, like our view of this activity and how we can spin this into maybe a positive in our wellness and weight loss journey. So, okay, first things first though, we need to know what we're doing and call it out for what it is. Now, my husband and I, we recently went to a local restaurant here. It's called Pardo's, literally one of my faves. And I, you know, had been doing really well all week. And um, when we made the plans to meet some friends for dinner, I literally told myself in the beginning of the day, I can't wait to enjoy this treat meal tonight. And when I do that, I'm understanding that this is a positive detour, allowing me to enjoy the moment, preventing any negative feelings after I consume the restricted food. But I'm also trying to prevent further disruption in my weight loss plan. So let's think about this like a food vacation. Okay, this is just a little analogy. Do we take six weeks on vacation? I know I heard it. I would love six weeks on vacation. Of course, we want to do that, right? We would love to do that until our American Express bill comes in and you realize you've got corporal tunnel from swiping your card like you were, you know, at a casino on the slot machines, right? Realizing a treat meal is just that. It is a small food vacation, like an overnight stay allowing us to be able to stick to the eating plan for a longer period of time. It's like being on a running track and you're just stopping, you're taking a break, getting a sip of water, and then you're running on the track again. It's the same concept in a way, but you understand what I'm I'm saying. Overall, a treat meal is more for your mind than for your stomach. I know that sounds weird, but it's the absolute truth. Stick with me here. It allows you to have some of the otherwise restricted foods that can bring back a little enjoyment with your eating. When done occasionally and monitored closely, this can actually be a very positive motivator for you. Now, this is some of these um, steps are based on an article written by Patrick Dale, who's a PT and he's an ex-Marine. And he, he this is the article was in fitnessvault.com and he reviews cheat meals and how to minimize their impact on your goals. So we're going to look at those things that he talked about And we're going to talk about how in the Hangry Game Nation, we can implement these great strategies to create the treat meals in our lives. 
To understand the positives of a treat meal, we need to first discuss a few things that have the potential to literally make this a slip trip and a pitfall instead of a quick escape from the real world, okay? So most individuals that attempt to have a cheat meal, we will find it very difficult to turn that hose of unrestricted eating off. It's like they turn the hose off and it's like a big fire hose and they can't really control it, right? And then that one restrictive meal actually winds up binging its way through your entire day or maybe even the weekend, And a cheat meal is really just one meal or occasion that you are diverting from the normal routine eating plan. But again, remember, we're calling this treat meals. Now, a great example of this is looking at what it takes, you know, in order for you to understand, okay, one meal is one thing. But if I binge the rest of the day, or I overindulge at that one meal, how's that really affecting me? I mean, is it really making that much of a difference, Kelly? All right, let me explain. A great way to kind of show you what this means is if it takes for one pound of weight loss, you have to have a deficit of 3,500 calories to lose one pound of of weight. Okay. If you unfortunately take your binge eating to the extreme and you consume 5,000 calories at a sitting, you, my friend, are going nowhere really, really fast. In fact, you likely are going to pick up a few extra pounds. And then what happens? You get frustrated. And then what happens? It's almost like that positive feedback system again. So we're trying to prevent that, really. Now, another driving force for cheat meals is usually it's not a designated diversion, but it's a lapse in willpower. And it's it needs to be labeled as such. It's a cheat meal. I mean, it is what it is. You had a lapse in willpower. This happens all too often. And many find themselves, unfortunately, doing it more than they should. When you detour from your eating plan and you binge a bunch of junk food, you need to call it for what it is. If it flops like a fish, if it smells like a fish, if it's got scales like a fish, it's a fish, my friend. And it's a cheat meal, okay? If if it's a deviation from your plan and it wasn't something you planned, uh, then it's a cheat meal. So when, with that being said, if you are lacking willpower, you're going to be more prone to this happening more frequently, affecting that long-term wellness and overall weight loss goal, right? So the adage here, once a cheater, always a cheater may in fact apply. So if you are doing that and you can't stop going back to the, the pool for some fun, then the shoe fits, then you need to wear it, right? So are we following our eating plan or exercise regimen enough to warrant a walk on the wild side with a little splurge in our meals? Uh, Think of this a lot like a bank account. Okay. I can't withdraw from the eating plan if I haven't done enough to deposit into our wellness and weight loss goals. Of course, the biggest concern we always have is for our true emotional eaters in this case, because a cheat meal, that negative connotation, has the potential to send the wrong message to your brain that can dive you back into that positive feedback system into the wrong direction. Like, oh, I don't feel good. I didn't make right choices. So what do I do? Comfort eat. And then what happens is I eat bad foods. And then what I do? Comfort eat. You see what I'm saying? That's the positive feedback system we're talking about. And of course, one of the biggest concerns we also have is for our true, um, we talked about that, sorry. (laughs) So how do we change the cheats to true treats in our stomachs and more importantly, in our minds? First and foremost, we need to do the when. What? You need to schedule when you plan on having the treat meal. I would recommend even ahead of time to work toward a goal or an activity or reward, okay? A perfect example of this is my typical week. Um, Involves, it's very, it's not monotone, but it's kind of a little bit. I mean, I'm very regimented, you know that. I'm very regimented about my breakfast. I usually eat a salad for lunch and I'm either doing the meals that I've prepped or I'm doing a factor meal or something along those lines, but it's very regimented. My sat, my, any snacks that I would have are very regimented as well. So for me, um, I love my treat meal is usually going to be breakfast. I love breakfast. I could do it for, you know, morning, noon and night. I could do it any time of the day. And so that really will be if I can go to a really cool diner, we have some amazing 
cool restaurants that are focused on breakfast in the area, that to me is going to be the win for me. Um, and a lot of times what will happen is we actually in a weekend, so I may do that on a Saturday morning, let's say. So often when we do indulge in that breakfast, it's going to be probably a little later in the day. So it's almost like a brunch. Um, and oftentimes what I'll do is I'll skip my midday meal cause I'm just not, I'm just not hungry. And then I eat a very sensible dinner or just maybe something very small. And that treat meal has not done any major damage to my weekly goals, which is amazing, right? So a treat meal is just that it is a meal. It's not a weekend at Bernie's. Okay. I mean, it is a meal. Make sure that you have a designated that treat meal with the time and the place so that you can enjoy the moment. Like when I went to Pardo's and we had that dinner, I enjoyed that moment. I didn't once think about the food that was on my plate and am I eating my max and micros and macros and micros and blah, 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 blah. No, I enjoyed my meal, but I knew that I needed to get right back on as soon as I was done. So, um, you know, you want it to be something that Yes, I enjoy the t- I enjoy the time, you know, at that time and that place, I enjoyed that food. And then I'm going to get right back to the regular schedule program tomorrow, or maybe that evening or what have you. Another thing is we want to avoid binging your treat meals. This is not some like WWF wrestling event where everything goes during the treat meal. Okay. It's not like all bars, you know, all hands, you know, just, I was it called. It's like, um, you know, caged in or whatever. It's like, no, 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 no. Um, you still need to make good choices. Even with the restricted food, you may find yourself being treated with always. And I mean, always stick with portion control, attempting to stay away from like buffets during this time. Or if you're going to go to a buffet, please, make sure to make good choices there. Obviously, if you can do something protein heavy or something like that, but it's not like, okay, how many calories can I get in in an hour? That's not what we want you to do, okay? If you do decide to treat yourself at home, make sure that you don't buy the family size portion of what you're planning on treating yourself with. We do not need to be asking for trouble in this case. I don't want anything sitting in your pantry tempting you at a later date. Yes, I did air air, uh, quotes again. (laughs) today's the air quote day. Um, Another great way to enjoy the treat meal all while minimizing any major setbacks is to attempt a workout or physical activity just prior to the treat meal. This is really cool because typically you are you're more insulin sensitive at that time. Your metabolic rate is on the rise during that time. It's all jacked up, right? And it's going to allow you to burn some of the excess calories that you're intaking with your treat meal. The goal is to dive, you know, um, is to drive um, more to the liver and to the muscles instead of it being readily available for fat stores. But again, it doesn't mean, okay, well, if I hurry up and work out, I get to have this treat and then tomorrow I'll do this workout so I can have this treat meal. No, that's a cheat meal. Move on. You've just messed it up. Okay. If you're not the strongest willed person in the room, I unfortunately don't have this issue then having junk food in the house may be your nemesis, okay? So when attempting to enjoy a treat meal, if you just don't know if you're able to step away from the table at a reasonable time, then the best thing for you to do is to enjoy your treat meals outside of the home. Make sure your home is a junk-free zone. And really from a wellness and weight loss perspective, this should have already been done. I should be telling you old news. You should be already like, Kelly did, done, done it, okay? Um, in this case, um, we don't want to be, be anything like those little rodent friends of ours, the squirrels, you know, where they store up all those nuts for the winter. Um, so in case we want a treat meal for later, no, no, no. Okay. Um, when we are at the point where we are thinking about another treat meal, when we're not even finished with this one, we need to go back to our prep steps and we need to think about if we've got some emotionally driven issues that we got to deal with there. Okay. Okay. So another great question when determining your treat meal is to determine how often should you have a treat meal? Great question. I knew you couldn't wait for that one, right? A lot of this will be determined by how close you are to your weight loss goals, how much you're planning on losing. And if you are exercising excessively, all of these are questions that you need to ask yourself. Some people think that they can have several treat meals in a week. And if you're just starting out on this journey, That is probably not the best place to 
place to be, right? That's not the plan that you need to have in place. I would recommend if you're just starting this journey, maybe a treat meal every two to three weeks, um, maybe one to two, depending on the exercise that you're putting into place so that you can truly um, identify it for what it is. It's a treat and it's not a frequent deviation from the, the routine eating plan, which frankly is becoming a cheat meal. So we want to set you up for success in doing so. You need to establish your eating plan first before we already start thinking about that next, that first treat meal. Okay. Now, a great way to determine this is to figure out where you are in your journey. Now, if you have just started this in the last two weeks, um, week or two, I would venture to say you're not ready for a treat meal. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Maybe make a goal for yourself. You know, after the first seven to 10 pounds that I lose, I'm going to have a treat meal or a snack. On the contrary, if you're kind of on a maintenance plan at this point, or you just have a few pounds from reaching your goal weight, then certainly a treat meal um, uh, once a week or so could be realistic for you. And that's okay. But again, evaluate where you are. And here's the other thing. If you start implementing more treat meals and you see your scale starting to, you know, slow down and maybe you start seeing climbing again, then you need to reevaluate were these treat meals really where I needed to put them. Get back on the horse, people. The best way to minimize the impact a treat meal can have on your progress is to get back on the horse. In this case, your eating plan as soon as the treat is over. In fact, I'm listen, this is it's gonna sound crazy. In fact, I would go a step further and I would plan the next meal before the treat so that there's the least amount of chance that you're gonna be reactive and you're gonna minimize that possibility. This is definitely gonna reduce the chance of that treat meal becoming a full blown day of cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. You know what I'm saying? So Anything we can do to minimize that we need to try to do, right? So here's the deal. At the end of the day, food is neither good or bad. It is what it is. It's it's food. And ideally, we should, in an ideal world, and I, I'm prefacing that, we should be able to eat any foods in moderation. That's my last air quotes, right? For the day and still be able to maintain our weight or even slowly lose to reach our goal. However, with that being said, if you feel like you need to reward yourself with junk food just because you ate broccoli for lunch, then you could be dealing with some emotional eating issues that need to be addressed. So you, the only person that's going to be realistic here and that's going to throw the truth bombs at you are you. Um, yes, you can have that designated eater or your accountability partner, but and they may tell you some of it, but at the end of the day, the person in the mirror is going to give you the best feedback that you can get. All right, that wraps things up. Um, um, so takeaways, I want you to really work on getting a mental paradigm. I really, really want you to have a mental paradigm shift in how we perceive these meals. That's very important because um, when we're indulging in a treat meal on occasion, staying steadfast otherwise, that's going to give us the best opportunity for long-term wellness and weight loss goals. Use the prep steps, even in this case, can be very helpful. What's my perception about the treat meals I'm having? Am I rationalizing this treat meal? Did I just make an excuse to have this treat meal, right? Um, what is my expectation when I'm going to have this treat meal? Or, you know, is it? am I expecting it to be um, a derailment? Then I need to really rethink it, you know, um, and my preparation. I'm already preparing that next meal so that I can stay on the, on the rails and I can uh, get back into that eating plan, Right. Um, it's very important to use them. Um, we want to make sure that we're avoiding any possible pitfalls, um, so that we can avoid it becoming the cheat meal. We want it to be a, a treat, always a cheater. Now a treater. We want to be in that mindset. Check out prepfort.com for free resources, great new recipes, recommendations for healthy choices in this weight loss journey. We've got that coming. We're going to start putting some of our recommendations out there so you can see them. Today, I have to tell you, it has been an absolute pleasure. I, I love when we can change our mindset about something and it's like an, uh, that it's like a little aha moment. And so I really love when we can see that happen. Um, make sure to subscribe to the podcast just so that it enables you to get notifications when we have new episodes that drop. And remember, 
Always a cheater, now a treater, right? Have a good one, Hangry Game Nation. We are out. Love you. Talk to you next time. Bye.